We'll now enter into a public hearing. HA-2018-01, zoning amendments, text amendment, food trucks and non-festival temporary vehicles, planning and zoning administration, vendors. This is a the culmination of many different meetings with City Council, including your uh, City Council retreat back in February, um, where we were, the city is the applicant and is proposing um, some amendments to the City of Big Power Zoning Ordinance. Um, Planning Commission reviewed these proposed changes at the meeting on Monday night, and they were recommending the final of these amendments to you by vote 7 to 0. Talk about this at length in your work session Tuesday evening. And I'll try to answer any additional questions you may have. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Martin? Well, what do you consider the food truck? Sorry, sir. No, right. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, does anyone else have any questions from the council? Uh, I know there's a comparison to the time frame, but I don't know if you got a chance to go back and do comparisons or maybe if you can look at that. But I, was, I know that was a question of the council at that time. I don't know if I can say, I don't know if you got a chance to review that versus what were there versus what Dallas the mayor had at one time, but I know it came up, so I was just going to actually give you credit. In part, that dovetails to our discussion on Tuesday night. Um, but also this time frame is 60 days on, 60 days off, at least for food vendors. That seems to be the main focus of discussion. Otherwise, it is 30 days. Um, excuse me, 60 days per calendar year for regular vendors. Was that, ever, was that 60 days? Was that at the very beginning in 2009? Well, it used to be 30 days per calendar. Are you 
Do you have some kind of an idea if uh, you know what the trend is, what the, what the vendors tend to do, if they with that 60-day um, permit to be on one lot, do they stay there one or two or three days or five or thirty or what is the general uh, trend that they use? Do, do you have any idea? I do not know. It's not something we track. We don't check on things like this each day or each week. Just the beginning and then we um, We do not get that many of them, at least for food vendors. Uh, most of our administrative permits are for special events or for other forms of temporary retail sales. Okay. And they can you know, and they can come and go. I mean, they can leave the premises Correct. and within come back within that 60-day permit. Yeah. It's no different than if you're a Makes restaurant, sense, if you're approved to operate as a restaurant, say, in you know, a permanent building. That doesn't mean you're required to be open every day. Right. Same kind of principle. And they're still exempted food vendors from festivals. Correct. Yes. Yeah, festivals or any event that the city sanctions. You know, they have of course like the Huntington Festival and any event. <coughs> the city wanted to branch out into one of the kind of event in the different kind of year and it's a city sanctioned festival. And that all comes with it. And that's difficult about also of course the exotic city festival, so from the exotic festival and that's the very center of that. Lots of vendors there. So under these, this proposed ordinance, assuming I just throw out the hypothetical at you, if the new um, person we hired here in Hara um, were to set up a food truck event that was city sanctioned, that would be outside of the one of the exceptions included in the ordinance.
exceptions? I believe you have some proposed language. <coughs> the application of this ordinance to two to two specifically identified currently existing businesses. <coughs> there is a provision that says they can continue unless they cease operation for some period of time. If they did that then they would then have to reapply and current it just like any other vendor. So that was I don't know if you have that in front of you, but it was proposed as a section eleven dash one point two. It just says the provisions of section 9-21 and 11-1.1 shall not apply to the following businesses which are licensed and operating as of the effective date of this ordinance. It identifies the barbecue place and the farm purchase place. Collectively, they're identified as the accepted businesses. Except that if either of the accepted businesses ceases operation or is closed for business for 14 consecutive days, said business shall be required to obtain an administrative permit in compliance with those code sections before resuming operations and shall thenceforth be subject to those permitting requirements. There's nothing magical about those deadlines, but just
slip, we do keep the 14 days in there. And one of the two vendors has a hardship where they will be out sick, hospital, two or three months. And this is something the city can approve as a or something, then going back into the grandfather falls and open that up, or is this, this is something we have to take action on? Um, I mean, I, I would avoid making exceptions or treating businesses or licensees differently. Um, you don't have to have a deadline to accept those two businesses. They want to shut down for six months and come back to it. If that's what you want to do, you can do that. Um, you just have a blanket exception for those two particular businesses. Well, I don't think you want to shut down for six months if they all try to make a living. So, so. again, you can just continue to let them operate kind of been operating without any provision that would bring that under this current <coughs> set of rules. In other words, just drop the if you see operations on just drop that. <laughs> Um, 
Um, and the comment was made by Mr. Rob Plum when he said, my understanding is that the purpose of this ordinance is to not to attract food vendors. And the response to that was um, a room full of nods and yeses and, um, and agreement. So that's why the intent concerns me. But I would like to lay out the six suggestions that I have for perhaps making this, um, this particular ordinance work. I am not against an ordinance. Um, in fact, I feel very um, confident that we can come up with an ordinance that will work for everybody because we should have. So I would like to see that um, item number 12 under 3A be removed. Um, and that is referring to a piece of property that has no existing business and um, it prevents the owner from leasing property to a food truck. Um, the grandfathering language, as I said, has already been handled. As far as the time frame, which I believe is what concerned the Planning Commission, is I'd like to see an administrative permit for six months issued. And in that six months, they are allowed one day per week. So however many weeks are in that six months, they would get one day per week. I believe administratively, excuse me, it would be better to, to maintain and manage that. That would be for food vendors and for non-food vendors, they would get two days per week per a six month um, permit. Time. And, and that was it, that was all my um, suggestions. Hi, um, my name is Megan Crawford. I live at 109 East Lawson Street. Hi. Um, I just wanted to make sure that Keith isn't taken away from us. As you can see, he's basically a member of our family. Um, when I come, I moved here two years ago from Valdosta because the siren scared my baby. And every time they came by our house, she would run up against the wall and be very still. This is our I always call this Mayberry. I say we live in Mayberry. This is the most beautiful town I've ever been in. And Keith is part of that. He's part of, he got us rutabagas with the greens on the top. So my mom hasn't had those since she was a kid. And that's part of the culture here is being a small southern town where you can eat rutabagas with the greens. And I can give that to my child. It's part of what my mom did for me, what her mom did for her, what I have to do for my child. But our, our sources are limited when we don't have key. Harvey's doesn't have the greatest selection, and we do have a smaller five ash that doesn't have a lot of selection either. However, when I go to Keith, my daughter and I go to Keith, get our vegetables, go to Five Ash, get everything else that we need for the week, and we're probably going to stop at Main Street Deli and get some corn dog bites because they're delicious. So by having Keith, we go to many places on our way there and supporting all of Ahira. Without him, I'd have to take all of that money and go to the farmer's market in Lyons County, and that's a 30-minute drive I don't want to have to make. And I don't want to take my money out of the hire. So that's basically all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. I am Jennifer P. D. Dean. I live at 604 South Nelson Street. Um, we've been there approximately 18 months now. And I want to speak on behalf because not only for the old farmer's market um, and the other food places, but because I am a non-traditional business owner. I have a business out of my home, and I am finishing up a mobile camper that's a boutique. And that's because so I can work from home and not have the um, expenses of a brick and mortar store, but still bring income into our home and to the city of Hayhara. Um, so a lot of what I do is not only do setups just if I run a lot or something for the day, but also take those items to somebody's house so they don't necessarily have to get out and try on clothes elsewhere. Uh, a lot of women don't like to go to the big department stores and that type of thing. So I um, offer you know, those services too. So and I think this limits my ability to do that. And um, I, I do agree with having some sort of ordinance and administrative permits that maybe um, make it where 
businesses like mine are it's friendlier towards us. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Coombs, 8880 Gordon Road, AR. Uh, not so much speaking against the ordinance necessarily, but I know the AR has hired a new downtown person in Stavenport, and I would just suggest, and you probably already thought about that, because always the tough things that she be included in this process. Uh, I hate to see a new hire come on and then her hands be tired and tied about this issue. So y'all probably thought of this, but maybe we should at least consider her opinions and her ideas for the decision. Thank you. Chance Lamb, 2770, Old Coffin Road. I have what I'd like to submit to the council, an initiative written by the Institute of Justice on uh, all of the information that we've been trying to cover here lately. Uh, this covers everything um, that y'all talking about as far as zoning and, and how to implement food trucks into a city. Uh, this is uh, more or less the, the, the way that most cities implement and, and handle their you know situations. And if I could, I'd like to submit that to y'all. Um, And I'd also like to read just one excerpt from this. With all these inherent advantages, restaurants don't need additional advantage of government intervention to protect them from food trucks. Furthermore, enacting rules to protect some businesses from competition isn't just wrong, it's unconstitutional. The U.S. Supreme Court and federal courts have held that it is illegitimate for state and local governments to pass laws that burden one set of businesses in order to benefit another more politically powerful group. Anyone else please wish to speak in opposition? Anyone else wishing to speak again? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this ordinance? Perry Robinson, operate Puddle House, 803 Georgia Highway, 22 West. I'd like to thank the Mayor, Council, staff, City Attorney, and all the concerned citizens for the work done on this uh, uh, ordinance uh, amendment. Uh, and I'd like to note that wasn't done in a secret corner, dark of the night. It was done in multiple open meetings, work sessions, retreats over several months with a generous ample opportunity for all interested parties to provide their input. I'd like to say that unfortunately it's been grossly mischaracterized by planning and zoning members as an attempt to protect bricks, brick and order businesses and keep food trucks out. And it's in fact uh, and in reality a means to provide a legal structure whereby food trucks can come to Hay Howard and located in a dozen places that I counted 12 times a year. That's four times more frequently than they can come to Valdosta, uh, which has a limited three if you do the math on that. Uh, the, the ordinance allows them to be here anywhere between 12 and 84 days a year. That's, that's like a fourth of the calendar year potentially. And that's in, plus the festivals, the special events, where they do the schools and recreation park out here that, uh, you know, that doesn't count. And that's still without paying any property tax, school tax, Mammoth County local option sales tax, water, sewer, sanitation, or really contributing anything back to the local economy. And without being subject to a lot of the other uh, ordinances like the, the 50 square foot uh, signage limit, uh, limitation, for example. Unfortunately, uh, it's also been mischaracterized as a fight uh, between brick and mortar restaurants and food trucks. Uh, it's resulted in the trashing of my personal character on, the, on social media and even uh, social media obscenities uh, against me. Uh, I will say that I'm one restaurant owner who has never been against food trucks in Hay Howard. Um, I, I have nothing against Mr. Gibbons, Hay Havachi Highway, or any other food truck, truck operator. I want to propose that they be subject to reasonable regulation. 
and as I understand it, uh, this regulation is one that's modeled after Valdosta's. It's, uh, it's just more relaxed, it's perfect, not likely, but uh, neither or any of the other regulations uh, that we have to live by every day. I believe food trucks should be able to just come and go with uh, you know, will, you, you're not going to be happy with this. But if you believe that they should be subject to reasonable regulation, then uh, you should vote to approve this amendment. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Kenneth Smith. My wife and I own on Main Street Deli, across the street at 300 West Main Street. When we first opened our restaurant two years ago, we purchased some tall pennant style uh, banners to draw attention to our business. Uh, to draw attention to our establishment. We, we put them up and we were forced to take them down uh, due to a city ordinance that doesn't allow them, despite the fact that it drew attention to our business. We understood the visual impact on the town and complied. The ordinance was to protect the visual integrity of the town, so not to appeal as a carnival-like atmosphere. Most every city has ordinances in place regarding local food vendors to protect its businesses and citizens. It is not uncommon for cities to adopt these ordinances, and frankly, it's surprising to know that there's such controversy and backbiting regarding this matter. It really has turned this nice quaint town against each other, and it's unsettling to know that. We are not personally against food trucks or vendors. But we have to know that our city officials have everyone's best interests in mind as they go to vote. And not just the interests of outside businesses or those who wish to bully their agenda into place. Regardless of the outcome, uh, we hope that our community can come together and support each other, other as we have and always have done since I've been here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Take comments from the council. Mayor, if I could interject before the council begins. I just wanted to, to let the council know <coughs> that uh, as has been our custom when our charter was revised about eight years ago, a, uh, an ordinance upon uh, its first reading, even if it is an amendment to the plan, uh, its only ordinance or our zoning ordinance, uh, our custom has been uh, that it must receive unanimous consent upon uh, initial adoption to be codified. Uh, if it does not receive unanimous consent on the first reading, which that first reading is tonight, uh, it goes to two successive readings. So we would have a second reading at the next regularly scheduled council meeting, uh, which time Council can receive public input if you so choose, and a vote is required. And then the, the third uh, successive reading, you would then have uh, an up or down vote, which could be uh, by a majority. Uh, however, I did want to make that point uh, that uh, if it is codified tonight, it would need to receive uh, unanimous consent. And also, if there are any modifications or changes that need to be made to the ordinance, it is possible to do that uh, as part of the motion tonight. We would just need to incorporate that uh, into what was said and, uh, and uh, make sure it's rewarded. Now, I'll entertain any questions you may have. That's all I have here. Any discussion? Well, I would mm -hmm. like to uh, say one thing. Uh, we have. Uh, over the past week, we have been accused of being unfair. That we uh, were just trying to ban food trucks altogether. But I want to uh, let everyone know: if you read, if you read the ordinance, you can see that we're not trying to ban food trucks. And they talk about. We only want to come in one day a week. But we give them seven days a week. Of course, then they have to leave. 
I do not understand why a food truck would not want to come in and set up for seven days instead of traveling to different counties. Because in this way, you save the gas wearing you on the trucks. But he just wants to come in one day and then come back again next week. Now, there, there's a reason for that, or what, what it's supposed to go to. But we have been more than fair on this ordinance. Whether it passes tonight or if it fails tonight. We worked on this thing for at least six months. Had discussion on it for at least six months. And we've had Mr. Martin, and we've had our legal counsel working on this ordinance. It's cost us quite a bit to get this ordinance in place. And I would like for anyone who's really interested in this ordinance, whether even if it does not pass tonight, or if it does pass, I would love <coughs> any citizen to get this ordinance and read it and see how we're being unfair. We're being too restricted. We are giving the food vendors, food truck vendors, more time than the city of Alabasta. And the thing about it is, I'm not, I'm not one for this time limit, but I went along with it. Because we've got one street that runs down by our, our hay highway. It covers 80% of all of our restaurants, 90%. We do have a church street that has a restaurant. But we've got one main street. We are not like other towns. We don't have two blocks north. We don't have two blocks south. We don't have to have the space, in my opinion, to support restaurants and food trucks. I've been told that food trucks makes our city grow. Food trucks do not make our city grow. The city of Hay Hour gains nothing from food trucks. We get no, only, I say we get nothing, I'll tell you that back. We do get a $50 a year business license. But food trucks that come in do not benefit the city of Hay Hour. Food trucks do not encourage growth in the city of Hay Hour. And it's hard to get people to understand that because they say, look at the people that come up, go up there, and eat. yes, they go up there. And eat. But it's usually people, if you sit around and watch it, it's usually people that's already here in town. Food trucks don't entice other businesses to help the city of Hay Hour and its citizens. And I took an oath four and a half years ago with Mary to protect the citizens of Hay Power. And I make my stand on that. I believe we do need a food truck ordinance. And I do not think that our food truck ordinance is too strict. I think we have been very limited. Now, I'll take any comments from the council. Yeah, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Uh, let me start by saying, <coughs> I love food trucks. I'm not saying that because we have a bunch of food truck vendors sitting in here and we're, we're all in the hot seat right now. I eat the food trucks. I like food trucks. I want to see food trucks in Hay Hot. But I am in support of this. Uh, this language as it is presented as it's written. It's not something that was brought up 
yesterday or last week, like the mayor said, it's been talked about uh, many times in different forums at the retreat mostly in February. That's when it was mostly hammered out, the wording was. And it's basically what you have in Bob Austin. And one thing I want to say about that is, is I, you know, recently wrote on, you know, to a response on, a, on social media uh, thing. I wasn't trying to be funny or sarcastic. Uh, I said a vote, yeah, a vote, a yes vote for this is a yes vote for the food trucks. I know you don't think so. I get that. It is restrictive, but that word is something that uh, brings up some bad feelings automatically, but unfortunately, that's what ordinances do. And that's all it is. It's just an ordinance to add, uh, as somebody has put it, I think it's quite accurate. And not just we're talking about food trucks, but many things that we deal with up here, it brings order to chaos. And that's all it's doing. Not that that's not a slur on food trucks, to say that you're chaotic or don't know what you're doing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that that is the nature of ordinances. And it is the nature of ordinances to add some structure. That is all we're after. That's the focus of this and nothing more. I, again, like food trucks. And I want to see food trucks here so that I can go buy from them and eat what they have to offer. Um, so with that being said, I want to say that, you know, I don't really understand the, when, I, when I'm talking about this late response, I'm not talking about the citizens that are coming here to speak. I'm talking about a kind of a late response on the commission because it's been made a big deal of that the, our planning representatives, uh, who I respect very much and thank very much for what they do because they uh, have a thankless job, they work hours, they go down to the city of Lot Austin uh, once a month or however often it takes and debate things that most of us are going to fall asleep talking about and just don't want to deal with it. They deal with all of our lives, but they're the ones that deal with it, so I thank them for doing that. Um, but I'm kind of perplexed as to why we got a unanimous no decision when all of this language has been talked about for six months and the actual, the actual language itself that was written specifically was, has been in writing black and white for three months and uh, sometime this week when I heard that the Planning Commission unanimously voted no, we don't want, we don't want this, we don't recommend it, uh, that's the first negative uh, thought I have heard about it in all this time. That's the first time. And it came with, and I know tonight we've had some suggestions brought in, in our citizens to be heard about some things that could be, that could make it better. But, uh, that's, thank you, but uh, it's, it's kind of late. I've never seen a commission vote or a discussion that denied something or said, no, this is not a good recommendation. We don't recommend this. It's not a good thing to do. And then not have anything to come with it to say, here, there's some changes or some guidance that might make it better. This is the first time in five years I've ever seen that happen. And I'm not putting the commission down for doing that. I understand there was a lot of talk. And I can I can picture that. There's a lot of talk and some things going on in here, and you forget some things that you want to say. I get that. I understand. So I can't fault them entirely for not adding some uh, guidance or suggestion. But be that as it may, we're here at a particular situation at the eleventh hour, so to speak, after all this time and hammering out all this this language that was brought forth by. Citizens, uh, council, uh, planning commission, uh, or and Matt Martin, you know, with some great guidance there. It, it's gone through the uh, legal test with our lawyer, Rob Plum, mm -hmm. um, and all you have a smooth road, smooth <coughs> all the way through, smooth all the way through. Not, was, not that it was that easy to hammer out all the language. It was, but once that was done. Nobody came up and said, well, what about number 12? What about that one? This one's a little bit restricted. None of that. Nothing. Um, and I want to say one more thing. Uh, just this one thing that dawned on me about an hour and a half or two hours ago. 
I started thinking, you know, well, this is the only thing that I heard Tuesday night about why, when we asked why, uh, during the work session that there was a unanimous decision. Uh, the main thing that came up was, well, it's too restrictive. Well, why? What's the specific restriction? Well, it's the time frame. Well, I looked at that and I started thinking, um, here it is. It's, it's a little bit different than Bob Austin's. It's a seven-day permit with uh, 30 days per calendar year on a particular parcel lot, so seven and 30. <coughs> Compared to Bob Austin's, um, it's a little bit different, but the overall difference still between Bob Austin and, and this one is actually a little bit more time, so it's less restrictive than Bob Austin's. So when I said on social media that, you know, if you can eat in Valdosta at, at a food vendor, then those same food vendors can come to Hay Hire and you can, you can patronize their businesses as well. Actually, you can do it even more with this particular language. But the one thing that dawned on me is this. Had this ordinance been in place in a rolling 12, a calendar 12, or whatever 12 months you want to go back, had this ordinance been in place one year ago, it would not have impacted any setup that's been taken place that I'm aware of anyway. So it's ironic to me that that was the main objection when that particular item in the in the language would not have even in, in, impacted the time frame I'm talking about, not the 50 feet from here, 10 feet from there. But the time frame would not have even impacted, to my knowledge, and I have to say I don't know every step of every food that is here over the last 12 months, but to my knowledge, uh, nobody, no food vendor has set up in the last 12 months where this particular ordinance would have impacted them negatively. Correct me if I'm wrong later, I apologize to you, but I think that says something that this is just, it's not restricted. It wouldn't have hurt you had it been in place a year ago, and it gives you more time than what about us to give you. So I, I don't see the restrictive language uh, or, or accusation there at all. I'm for version that has, um, I say version, there's one version, but the version that we have here is, you know, provides for two, for, for the, for the uh, vendors that were here before, the two vendors mentioned, I'm for that. Um, as far as taking this off the table though, and that's my last thing here, as far as taking this thing off, off, off the table tonight and then regrouping and starting to re-hammer all this, you know, hammer all this out again, rehash it. I'm not for that because I think we need to go ahead and get something going. Uh, this is something that can be changed later, possibly, but we need some order to that chaos right now. Um, I think, and I think our T's have been crossed, our I's have been dotted, and we went back and erased a few and wrote, rewrote in the right way with a lot of input. I want everybody to know that. We did not make this. We mirrored, in large part, an existing ordinance that has existed for many years. I'm not going to ask many years, but somebody's answered that question already. But it's been many years, uh, and some people in this room will probably have taken advantage of a version of that ordinance in Bob Austin. And, you know, so if you're operating that way, you're going to be able to operate the same way here in Hay Island. And I welcome that. That's, that's, that's great. Um, so, with that, I'll shut up and just say that I think we need to pass this tonight in the words that it's written. Thank you. Do we have any more council comments? Uh, I just concur with the council Davis. What was that uh, concern? Uh, when the food truck uh, situation came up, I think the council's uh, idea was to come up with something that would be fair for business owners and fair for food trucks. Uh, the whole intent of, uh, of any ordinance is to try to provide something fair for every citizen of a high. Uh, that's the intent. Do we always get it right? No. Have we gone back and corrected things once we've seen them? Yes. And that's the confidence I have with this council is that once they are faced with something, they, they don't start the issue, they tackle the issue. But in tackling that issue, if they see something 
that you better benefit or better uh, correct some some type of situation, they would go back and look at that. And a lot of thought, a lot of hard work was put into this ordinance. Uh, my only disappointment, uh, Councilman Davis brought that up, is uh, the Planning Commission is an advisory body. They're an advisory body to us. It's not by them. But when you have an advisory body, you're expecting some type of feedback, good or bad, indifferent, because you want to improve on upon what you have in front of you. What the council's best attempt was, you put the best attempt out. If it's not the best, just like it's been stated, it can be revised. But you have to get something out there. Um, so, Councilman Davis, I concur with you. Well, I hate going after Councilman Benjamin because he, he ties it up so well. <coughs> um, just a couple of thoughts. I, as a practicing attorney, I'm trained to uh, follow the law. I, actually, I enforce the law as a prosecutor, but uh, I don't write laws. It makes me very nervous to craft ordinances that then have to be followed because uh, I'm so used to those already being in place. Um, I made a lot of notes. Uh, I'm, I'll just and, and they're kind of trying to follow, but I'll do the best I can. There are no losers tonight. There are only winners. And I think Councilman Benjamin said it best, because we as a council, with staff, with the mayor, with our departments, we're going to make this right. And if it's wrong, then we can fix it. That's the beauty of the system. But the fact is, and I believe Matt Martin said this best, we have nothing in place right now. Nothing. There is no regulation at all. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the definition, my definition legally of chaos. Uh, I, I came at this ordinance from a little bit of a different perspective, I think, than, than some of the people did. My concern was safety. Uh, I'm a big Today Show watcher. And I saw it, an, an, uh, and it was, I believe, by the same people that did this handout that this guy brought. But uh, the propane tanks on those things can blow up. Um, they are. But, you know, that can happen in a brick-and-mortar restaurant as well. I'm not saying that's just food trucks, but uh, there has to be regulation. There has to be safety that has to be followed. Um, and that always that, that was a great concern for me. So the safety regulations, which have never been mentioned in this ordinance at all by anyone, uh, it's my understanding that the uh, Planning Commission voted no, but not on the safety components of it, only on the frequency food trucks can come to higher. Well, I've struggled with this because I want to do the right thing for the citizens of Hay High. I've polled members of my district, um, and uh, most folks were indifferent. They said, you know, we, we don't look for the food truck if we're headed up to Five Ashes or Harvey's or the dollar store and it's there. Sometimes we stop, but um, I didn't get a, a real strong feedback from my district about this particular ordinance, even once it was. So, um, Tim, the events coordinator that we need to hear from, I think it was pretty clear that the uh, city events are exempt from this particular ordinance. I'm anticipating that uh, Emily Davenport will really come on online, create some great events for us that food trucks would definitely be part of. I think that is the avenue we need to take with this particular issue, is to create events where they're welcome and they come. I want picnic tables to be put out. Uh, if anybody's ever been to a place like England, uh, people sit outside, or, or, you know, anywhere up in, the, in the, the, the Northwest. People sit outside and they, they congregate and they enjoy the outside time. I think that's something that Hayhart is missing, and I want that to be part of our community. And I think our community will not only grow, but will benefit from that. Um, this ordinance may not get everything right, but right now, the status of food trucks in Ahara is in limbo. And if we enact this tonight, they can now come to Ahara and participate in what we have going on here. And they can do that legally, and they can do that safely. And that's my reasons for getting behind this tonight. I know that there's people have reservations about this frequency issue, but Councilman Davis said, and I believe he's right, this would have had no effect on their participation in Ahara's community last year if they had followed this ordinance. So, I'm going to 
to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, the, the last issue I want to take up is I think 14 days of on the existing business businesses is a little short. I would ask that the council take into consideration a, a 30 day time frame um, to take into account um, issues where that it may involve family or something like that. So I, I would recommend that leaving the reversion portion of that uh, on the existing businesses if I'm making sense, if I'm not, if you guys are. But uh, I would ask that we change it from 14 days to 30 days. I think that's good. I found as I get over 30 days, it's reasonable for just about anything. You know? <laughs> uh, whether my back is hurting or you know, the car is clunking, give it 30 days. And you'll see what happens. So. But having said that, I love the community, I love the people here. And we can change this if it's not right. If there's something wrong and, and there's some violation of the law, we can change it and make it right. But I've reviewed it, the attorneys reviewed it. We, for months and months now, we have worked on this particular document. So this is not, we're not shooting from the hip on this one right here, ladies and gentlemen. We've checked it, we try to be as fair as possible in representing the people of Hayhauer, and I believe this particular ordinance does that. So for those reasons, I'm gonna vote yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll entertain a motion We've got some choices here. First, of course, is a motion to deny. The second will be a motion to approve with the with the grandfather files. <laughs> but I want to make sure everything's in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Legal counsel said I'll let you for I just open the floor for a motion. I'd like to make a motion that the council approve the language of the food truck ordinance amendment with the language that includes the existing two bit grandfathering in the existing two businesses that we talked about. And on the last page, changing the 14 consecutive days to 30 days with respect to if the existing businesses coming to the event that they may cease operation for, for a period of time for whatever reason, change that time from 14 to 30 days. Does that make sense? Yes. I have a motion by uh, Councilman Davis to a hearsay. Second. Second by Councilman Benjamin. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? By sign. Motion carried. Coming out of it, 